don't, don't, don't call me Superman if you haven't found my kryptonite. What is going on, YouTube? This is the Big K Cop 360 here, and boy, I have been sick, man. You guys know that feeling where you like. Uh, you like swallow just like saliva as usual and then you feel like that slight tinglish feeling in your throat and then at that point you know it's all over because you know the sore throat is going to be coming in a few hours or the next day which is going to develop into a cold and into a cough well that's pretty much what happened to me a few days ago um i, I felt that tingling feeling and i was thinking oh there's nothing i can really do to stop it i might as well just deal with it so you know i bought some strepsils tried to calm it down a bit so i'm not too sick but it's still pretty bad. <coughs> but um, anyway, of course, the time when I'm sick and I can't produce quality videos is the time where all the good stuff happens. So, of course, firstly, we had E3. What happened at E3? Well, first of all, uh, AMD announced the RX 470 and the RX 460. I'm going to be focusing more on the RX 470 today. But at the end of this video, I will give you some brief details into the RX 460. But anyway... The interesting thing about the RX 470 was that we found out um, that uh, the RX 480 is actually the full fat Polaris 10 chip. So I was thinking, okay, maybe we're going to have an RX 480X or something like that, which had more stream processors, but no, the RX 470 is actually the cut down version. So essentially, the RX 470 is the 7850 to the RX 480 7870. It's the cut down version. You guys already know about all of this. I don't need to get into it. So, at the moment, we don't actually know how many stream processors it has, but it's probably going to have, you know, 2048. That seems like a typical number AMD would go for. It depends on the, on the amount of, um, <coughs> sorry, CUs and whatnot. So, uh, we don't actually know that at the moment, so I'm just guessing. But continuing on, it has around 5 teraflops of performance, compute performance. That's pretty good. That's compared to the 5.5 of the rx480 now of course these are just estimations but um by amd it's not like specific numbers uh teraflop or compute performance obviously varies on clock speed uh so yeah continuing on just like the 480 this will come in four and eight gigabyte variants so of course how much is it going to cost well you're going to be seeing i don't know i guess 50 dollars less than the rx480 so if you have a 199 dollar rx480 which is four gigs it's going to be the four gigabyte version obviously then expect to see an rx470 four gigs for around 149 bucks 150 us dollars <clears throat> now of course uh in australia how much is it going to cost i don't know we're probably looking at 250 uh at the very least but i really don't know we're gonna have to see how the pricing really like scales through into here but uh, continuing on, um, it's got 7 gigahertz of effective memory. Uh, that's versus 8 on the, um, the RX 480. So, of course, it's a cut-down card. It's not going to be as good in terms of memory. It's not going to be as good in terms of clock speeds at base or at stock. But that's just how it's going to be. Now, of course, speaking of clock speeds, we still don't actually know the clock speeds of any of these cards. The RX 480, like, default base clock speed is still, like, unknown. People are throwing out numbers like 1080 megahertz, 1266. People are saying that some BIOSes uh, make the card underclock and all this different shit. Like, there's so much talk about the RX 480 in particular and how it performs. Like, it's actually insane. No one actually knows how well the card performs. Some people are saying it's better than an R9 Nano. Some are saying it's worse than the GTX 980. I mean, it's all over the place. So we're just going to have to wait and see. But continuing on with the RX 470, you might be asking, well, Cobbs, how does it perform? Well, AMD pretty much showed us some benchmarks of the 470 versus the R9 270X. I'm bringing you guys this courtesy of Guru 3D. <clears throat> of course, keeping in mind, the 270X or the 7870 was a 180 watt card, and this card is 110 watts. Um, it's considerably better. I mean, look at that. Overwatch, 1080p max settings. 121 FPS versus 76. Hitman, 1080p high. 60 versus 28. Ashes of the Singularity, 1080p high. 46 versus 28. <coughs> like, it's not too bad at all. And if we actually look at our 3D Mark Fire Strike scores, um, of course, uh, the actual figure, that 9,090 number that you saw, is our courtesy of AMD, but everything else is normalized by Guru 3D. As you can see, it performs like in the realm of an R9 290. Like, it's pretty much at the R9 290 level. Now, of course, 
I didn't know if Guru 3D had that 290 at stock. I believe the stock speed of a 290 was around 925-ish megahertz. Um, I don't really know. I probably should have done a little bit more research into Guru 3D's like overclocking or into their um, data collection for these GPUs. But like, it gives you a good perspective. I mean, I assume it's stock. The 470, I assume, would be stock by AMD. So as you can see, it performs around the level of an R9 290, which is very, very interesting because um, based on how the RX 480 performs, this might actually be the better price performance card. I mean, looking at history, like the 290 or the 390 was almost always better value than the 390X. The 7950, maybe 7950 versus 7970 is a different story. But particularly, re particularly recently, sorry, the 290 was a very, very good card, or the 390 was a very good card when compared to its full fat brother. And of course, it obviously rolls over. It depends, and that's not always the case. But I mean, if this card is performing at a 290 level at 149 US dollars, I mean that's pretty damn good. So I don't know. It's it's kind of cool. People are, of course, a little bit disappointed that AMD didn't give us like a more powerful card, like a 480X or something like that. But they did always say from the start that, look, we're targeting the mainstream market and the big cards, the 490, the, the Fury successor. All of that is going to be coming with Vega or Vega. Some people are saying Vega will come in October. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that rumor is false. Um, it's probably going to be coming in December of early next year. I honestly don't think like HBM2 and the yields uh, of the car of the chip itself so it will be good enough for them to really launch it in October. I mean that's only four months away. Four months sounds like a long way away, but in the context of all of this, it really isn't. So let's just see how AMD goes with the RX 470 and the 480. And of course, the elephant in the room, the big AMD RX 460. Of course, this is the Polaris 11 chip that we've all been waiting for. It has around two teraflops of performance. It's going to come in two and four gigabyte variants. It's got a 128 bit memory bus versus the 256 bit memory bus on the 470 and the 480. And it has 1024 stream processors. Now, AMD is saying that this is like the esports card. This is perfect for people who play esports games. Of course, I honestly think it's going to be performing or it's at a level, or I personally think, sorry, it's at a level higher than that. I mean, they showed the GTX 950 versus this card, and it was performing, it was outperforming, sorry, the 950 by quite a good amount at a much lower like, TDP, much lower power uh, output, power consumption rate. So, it's good. I mean, we're just going to have to wait and see. Once again, we don't really have proper benchmarks, but I don't know. Just hype, guys. June 20... Not June 29th. The 29th of June is when the NDA lifts on the RX 480. And I assume we're going to be getting a lot more RX 470 and RX 460 news then as well. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And look, the big K, we'll see you later.